What's up guys and welcome to a new episode of Spartan Ownership. Um, today I will be giving you guys 21 lessons I have learned from Miyamoto Musashi. He is a famous samurai and author of the book The Five Rings um, and he wrote that book in the 1600s. He is known for slaying over 60 men in one-on-one -on -one dual combat and is a true warrior and a true philosopher and a pillar of wisdom that we can all use today to aid in our daily lives. The following lessons are actual quotes that Miyamoto actually said and my interpretation of what he meant. If you feel like I have not interpreted something correctly, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Lesson number one, accept everything just the way it is. So what that means is accept reality, be a realist. Do not live in a delusional world where you think the world revolves around you. Instead, accept nature and reality as it is, thus giving you a better edge when it comes to your power. Lesson number two, do not seek pleasure for its own sake. So what that means is do not become a instant gratification addict. Do not seek comfort all the time and pleasure all the time because that will distract you from achieving those higher ambitions, those higher ideals and self-mastery and self-discipline. If you are a creature of pleasure, your life will only be a series of highs and lows like a drug addict. So pursue higher ideals instead of chasing pleasure for its own sake. Lesson number three. Do not under any circumstances depend on a partial feeling. So to me, there's two ways of interpreting that. Number one is for your intuition. If you only have a partial feeling about something, then do not trust your intuition. But the second way, which I feel is the uh, correct way that he is talking about, is do not under any circumstances depend on a partial feeling when it comes to your emotions. So do not depend on your emotions. Just because you have a feeling that is pushing you left or a feeling that is pushing you right, those feelings may sway you off your purpose and off your path. So do not rely on those small partial feelings. Instead, rely more on your purpose. Lesson number four, think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. So what that means is, in my opinion, that when you think too much of yourself, you become too bogged down by all the thinking it becomes a burden if you're constantly focused on yourself you can't possibly see what's going on around you so when you think deeply of the world and less of yourself you open yourself up to way more opportunities in so many different directions and you become a true pillar of wisdom uh, compared to someone that simply spends all their time thinking about themselves and their petty desires and wants lesson number five be detached from desire your whole life long so in my opinion, what that means is being detached from your desires means being detached from your lesser impulses, your lesser desires that lead you nowhere. Similar to the pleasure seeking principle, pleasure and desire kind of go hand in hand. So detaching yourself from desire makes you more fulfilled with the minimals in life, uh, sorry, minimums in life and makes you more focused on your purpose. Lesson number six. Do not regret what you have done. So when you regret what you have done, you are stuck in the past and thus not focused on the present and thus you will never move forward with the clarity of someone who has that present moment awareness. So regretting what you have done is a waste of time. It is unpractical. Therefore, look back only for reflection, but never regret what you have done. Total waste of time and energy. Lesson number seven, never be jealous. What is the point of jealousy if you are a warrior heading forward towards your path? Jealousy is envy and it will bring you nothing. If anything, it is simply like desire. And desire, once again, we have learned, is useless if it is in the wrong direction. Jealousy is often for the wrong reasons and thus leads you towards the wrong direction. Number eight, never let yourself be saddened by a separation. When you are saddened by a separation, you are essentially being too attached to a one thing. Realize that separation, loss, and change is a part of life, and you will never be saddened by separation. This has to do with accepting reality and accepting nature as it is. Lesson number nine, resentment and complaint are appropriate neither for oneself nor others. So what that means is 
do not complain, do not resent anybody. And what he means by uh, for oneself or for others means that you cannot complain about others, you cannot complain about yourself, about what you have done, about what you can or can't do. There is no place for that in the life of a warrior, a warrior who trains constantly to move forward. Lesson number 10, do not let yourself be guided by the feeling of lust or love. If you are guided by lust, which is a pleasurable feeling, a very emotional feeling, and a feeling that does not have much groundedness, it is usually a flaky feeling that goes up and down and away eventually. Same thing with love. When you are guided by two of these feelings, oftentimes you make wrong decisions. So make sure that when you make a decision, you are detached and you truly understand what's going on. Feelings such as lust and love will lead you astray. Lesson number 11, in all things have no preferences. When you have no preferences, no likes or no dislikes, that gives you a tremendous vantage point of power. Because instead of being a victim of, oh, I don't like this or oh, I don't like that, you simply accept reality as it is and you deal with what you got. If God gives you lemons, you make lemonade out of that motherfucker. Lesson number 12, be indifferent to where you live. So wherever you live, always seek to find opportunity there. Do not start wondering, oh, I wish I lived in this hotter place, in this sunnier place, in this place with palm trees. Take whichever environment you have and make the best with it. <coughs> For instance, I live in a very cold part of the United States, especially during the winter time. So instead of wishing I was in some sunny beach in the Bahamas, for instance, I take advantage of the cold, I take advantage of the snow to train my body to become stronger and more resilient. Lesson number 13, do not pursue the taste of good food. This is very essential and a very warrior-like trait. When warriors are in battle, they don't have all the options of good food, of great seasoning, of beautiful products and expensive products. If you learn how to be okay without the best of foods, you will learn to simply choose food based off of how it makes you feel and how much energy it gives you. Instead, view food as fuel uh, instead of a source of pleasure. Lesson number 14, do not hold on to possessions you no longer need. One of my favorite quotes of all time uh, is this one and also one by Mark Devine, Navy SEAL, who says, a warrior travels light. When you are bogged down by possessions, it fills your body up with stress, you have more mental clutter, more mental cloudiness, and you can't focus on your purpose as much. Embrace a lifestyle of minimalism and you will feel the lightness and fierceness of a warrior and of a monk. Lesson number 15, do not act following customary beliefs. So when you act following customary beliefs, you are acting in a way that it just says to act in the book. A lot of religious people do that. It's basically dogma. It says it in the book, so you have to act that way. Instead, use your own instinct and intuition to determine how to act. Lesson number 16, do not collect weapons or practice with weapons beyond what is useful. I like this quote because it says that he had a very practical view of seeing things. When you practice with weapons beyond what is useful, you're most likely engaging in tricks and in show off. And that is not doing anybody any good and it is only inflating your ego. Lesson number 17, do not fear death. A warrior has already come resolute to the fact that he may one day die and eventually will one day die. So when you accept death and you stop fearing it, you are unencumbered by that fear as you move forward and as you take on the challenges of your day. Lesson number 18, do nothing that is of no use. So I really, really love that one. And some of you guys may already know that I have a tattoo of an hourglass on my arm that I constantly look at to remind me that time is constantly running out. So do nothing of no use is very straightforward. Do not invest too much time in things that don't bring you anywhere, that don't make your life better in any way, such as video games, such as playing golf too much, such as pursuing pleasurable activities just for their own sake. Those types of things are often 
of no use to your purpose and of no use to your movement towards life mastery. Lesson number 19, respect Buddha and the gods without counting on their help. So if you're like me, you probably believe that there's something out there greater than us. Maybe a, maybe God, maybe universe, energy, whatever you want to call it, something's probably out there. But the truth is you cannot count on that for help, especially all the time. If you look back in history, many people have suffered tremendous atrocities. The world has proven to not be fair over and over again. Therefore, you must rely on yourself and the gifts that you were given through your intelligence, your body, and your own capabilities to reason and to take action in this world. Do not shame your own abilities and the gifts you've been given for a belief in some deity. Lesson number 20. If you wish to control others, you must first control yourself. This quote is essential because it hints at the fact that Miyamoto also believed in self-mastery, which is a huge aspect of Spartan ownership. When you master yourself and you truly understand what that takes and what that means, you will then be a way better leader and have a way better influence over other people. And lesson 21, the ultimate aim of martial arts is not having to use them. This is key because it brings you back to one of the most fundamental aspects of martial arts, which is awareness. Instead of going to a bar at night and getting into a fight at 2 in the morning, a person with awareness would avoid going to the bar in the first place. There are many situations in life where a simple act of awareness may prevent an enormous amount of unwanted consequences. So. Ultimately, the use of martial arts is to not use them at all. Hey, so if you guys enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and share. Let me know if you had a different interpretation of any of these sayings. And also check out SpartanAccountability.com for uh, discipline mentorship. If you're struggling with discipline, SpartanAccountability.com offers a monthly plan where I personally hold you accountable to your own standards and make sure that you do whatever it is you set out to do in the first place. Take care.